we had this engine that was itself able to to be kind of intrinsically pure and it wasn't like there were artists in that like they were thinking about how many people will find this game fun how good is it right they were asking those those questions but they weren't encumbering what was already a challenging creative process with things that didn't help it right right like hey you've been working you know so we had games that we were working on for like three years that we can't Oh yeah, I mean, there's like a huge list. There's a gigantic list of, of prototypes that never got released at PopCap. And yeah, every once in a while, there's kind of like, oh yeah, that one. I wonder. We had a couple of games that got canceled. I think we had a couple of prototypes that got canceled twice. I think we had one that got canceled four times, maybe. What was that one? That was when pigs fly. It uh, it was kind of originally like this game where you shoot a pig out of a cannon and try to make him go as far as you could. Um, and then yeah, it got canceled as a PC game, and then I think it got canceled as a as a mobile game, and then I think it made it out as a Facebook game, like into a soft launch for a for a month or two before it, it also got canceled. Oh wow! So yeah, maybe one day, maybe one day. It was just one of those things where it was I don't know. It was, it was kind of fun, but it wasn't quite fun enough. And so I, I mean, the, the the only the downside of prototyping new game ideas is that um, it sounds like it seems like fun and it is fun for the first few months. But once you've been working on prototyping one game over and over again for like six months, you start going kind of bonkers. So there's a, there's a, there's sort of prototype fatigue. I think that we noticed like somewhere around, you know, it, it could take a couple months to get to a stage where it's playable. And then you sort of had a golden uh, phase of another couple months where you'd be playing around with ways to get it to, to really, you know, kind of get locked in. Uh, but if you didn't succeed then, then you started having a downward spiral of just not knowing what the heck was going on. And, you know, in some ways you just lose perspective and you start going crazy. And that's the point where you, you generally had to kill it. Yeah. Uh, I read somewhere that there were multiple attempts at an RPG called Pop Quest. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. What was Pop Quest? Um, Pop Quest was a... Uh, it's kind of like a roguelike, basically. It was like a roguelike dungeon crawler, except with you know, kind of very cute, uh, cartoony characters that you'd um, that you'd uh, move around. But it's kind of it was just full on tactical RPG. You know, you'd have little guys moving around, kind of XCOM style, you know, uh, combat in these little dungeons. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was it was it was actually pretty fun. It had uh, its big problem was uh, it, it was just it kept scaling up in complexity and kind of adding more features and more, more things that kind of just, you know, sort of ended up, ended up turning into this sort of never ending bug catastrophe where you couldn't, you change one thing, you know, break 25 others, you know, and then you spend a week fixing that. It came close. It got to beta and the beta testers still asked years later, like what happened to pop quest, um, which was a turn-based ta- kind of tactical RPG. think very inspired by, uh, that hack in a lot of ways. Oh, interesting. Um, it just in like in a very like we had sprites and everything, but you were moving in room based tile formations and your heroes had abilities and the whole thing. Like even internally we really enjoyed it. But uh it I think it got killed shortly after I started where they're just like, nah, we can't we can't put this out right now. Yeah. Um and so it just kind of, it kind of fell away, unfortunately. But uh, the dream lived on for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a fun one. I don't know. If I look back at it now, again, that was like more than a decade ago. And of course, there's been a bazillion, you know, on Steam, for example, there's been a, a zillion indie roguelike RPGs. Uh, I, was, I was a big fan of roguelikes from back in the day. So, you know, it, it seemed like a novel idea then. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it would be all that novel now, given the preponderance of of roguelikes. Right. Uh, there is a tease of a game that Popcap was working on years and years ago, and it's never left my brain. What was Yeti Train? It's a very good name. Uh, yeah. Yeti Train was uh, that was one of the games that um, uh, the Plants vs Zombies team was working on post Plants vs Zombies, and that one actually got pretty far along. Like it wasn't quite. 100% polished in terms of all the graphics and stuff, but it was it was pretty pretty mechanically 
solid. And that was what happened there. That was basically a game where you were trying to uh, you were trying to build railroads across this this landscape for this train, which was being driven by a Yeti to transport snowballs or something, I think. And so as you traveled across, it was sort of the 2D side scroller kind of thing of this train. As you travel across landscapes, you'd be picking up resources and being attacked by pterodactyls that you would shoot snowballs at. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you each town, there was some sort of resource management stuff where you could, you know, you could, uh, you know, buy and sell stuff and um, improve the the town and so forth. Uh, it was, yeah, it was actually fairly fun. I think that what, what was the problem with that one? I think that one eventually, I think the problem they had on that was, it was a weird one. I think basically they started second guessing some aspect of it. I think they started second guessing the the combat mm. and they started trying a whole bunch of different variants. Like the original combat was pretty straightforward. You just kind of clicked on the screen and threw snowballs at uh, pterodactyls, a little bit sort of like a missile command-ish kind of deal. Um, at some point, yeah, they somewhere somewhere along the line, they decided to start trying some other version of combat and it started, and then it kind of just, yeah, they just sort of weren't able to find something that satisfied them, and it kind of just sort of got sort of mired in, in that until it kind of uh, kind of collapsed. Yeah, Yeti Train was awesome. Like anything that George Van did was always great, um, and Pop Quest was pretty good too. But, you know, it it's funny because there's a lot of stuff that was on the cutting room floor. Um, and the fact that that stuff didn't get released, I think, is like a testament to the, just how great that company was. It was like any lesser company would have put that stuff out. You know, I mean, so oh, you know, um, oh, what was it called? There was a space game that was actually like a ripoff of an earlier space game. Like it was basically like a space battle game where you had like these little tiny asteroids kind of ships and you're flying around and there's like some gravity and you're shooting each other. That game was super fun and totally awesome. We played a lot of it, but it never made it out. A couple years in, there was some prototypes for like a an Xbox Live Arcade platformer. Oh, interesting. We got pretty far on that, like trying when Xbox Live was really uh, blowing up, and that was like a really great place for like small indie games. And like we had ported Bejeweled and Zuma. Um, Astropop, like a number of our core games on there, and they were doing really well. We're like, well, what if we do a just a game for Xbox Live? Like, focus it there first. Um, yeah. And yeah, uh, a couple of the guys there were really into like uh, platformers, and so they worked pretty hard for a while on like making this like platformer prototypey demo thing. Do you remember um, what it looked like or what the name was or anything like that? I don't remember the name. I don't know if it ever had a final name or it didn't have any kind of final. It was just sure. Whatever they had called it. Um, it had like a robot pirate theme going on <laughs> okay. uh, with like getting bunches of treasures and loot. Um, it was pretty combat heavy. There was this game. It was in the later years. Uh, so under EA, probably my last year. And uh, we had this, this, this pop labs, this prototype kind of group that was doing prototypes and, uh, and we gave them a lot of kind of creative control. We tried to kind of within EA and within the freemium mobile gaming world to kind of kind of like try to apply what worked at PopCap to this new world. And uh, we weren't successful um, for a variety of reasons. And um, but I feel like this the game that that was being worked on was was really good. And, and old PopCap would have let it become itself. And at that point, we were no longer that. And so they en- they ended up canceling it. And I think I, I regret not not being sort of an advocate for them doing it. And what was it? It was like a um, oh, what was that game? What was the game? It came from Japan, or I think maybe China, and it was like almost like you, I think it was called a match three. It wasn't the same. Oh, Puzzle and Dragons. Well, yeah, yeah, Puzzle and Dragons. So it was like. Uh, it was a little inspired by that. And you would like make these connections between different things. And then depending on how you did that, it would power up. You had these, a team of superheroes and it would power them up to do different things. And then depending on what chain you did and how you did it, 
it could allow combos or, or triple combos. And so like heroes could have synergies or not synergies with each other. And then you were kind of like playing, um, you know, you're going through battles and stuff. We, we had a couple puzzles in Dragon Clone, like not clones per se, but trying to take that, um, I don't even know, match RPG type stuff. Yeah, um, chaining match. I don't know how much you call yeah, it. But yeah, yeah. I worked on one for towards the end there for a while that was like a sci-fi themed um, chaining thing where you're putting together a crew and could modify your ship and stuff and move through like a solar system. Think in some ways like a map somewhat inspired by FTL at the time. Okay. Uh, but where the, the main mechanic is doing these different matches of systems that would fire weapons or power shields, a little bit of Star Trek influence there. Uh, that was a, that was when we actually had kind of a prototyping group. Uh, it had a bunch of themes. Sci-fi was one of towards the end when I got on it um, with a couple other people. Um, but I think it had gone through like a potential superhero theme before that. Mm -hmm. And then that always came up of being like, oh, if we do a superhero theme, can you really do your own superheroes? Does that work out? Or do you really, if you're going to do superheroes, do you have to go to like Marvel or DC um, and just say, hey, we want to get a license for this? Because right. how much do people care about your own made up superheroes? It just needed an advocate. I think it needed it needed some external like, hey, we can we can do this, and and in, even if it doesn't work, well, let's do this, right? And I think that they were just feeling that wasn't going to happen under EA. So they ended up making the choice to cancel it. Um, but I think all parties involved, and by that I'll at least say um, Ben, Jake, and myself. Uh, I wasn't involved in the decision. Ben and Jake made that. I think the call, but I regret not not doing that, right? Like. That seems crazy that in that EA era, it's like, hey, we have an iteration of Puzzle and Dragons that'll work on mobile. That that EA is not like, hey, that one, yeah, go ahead and bring that up to the top well, of the stack. They they were okay. That was the thing is is they were like, this is great, you should ship. It's going to make a billion dollars. And I swear, and I swear that didn't help. So so that was one where where I, I regret that. Yeah, I've gone on record. If I was going to say which prototype do I kind of um, do, do I wish had sort of worked out? Yeah, uh, I mean other than. Uh, there were a couple of the plans for the zombies guys ones that didn't quite make it. There was Yeti Train. There was also uh, what the heck was that one called? It's yeah, sort of a survival island one, which I I forget the name of now. It's kind of like a thing where you uh, where you kind of were trying to survive on a desert island. That was pretty neat. That sounds cool. And they had a dinosaur one. Um, I can't remember that name of that one either. But uh, out of the other ones, there was a bejeweled var variant that uh, I worked on called. Bejeweled Paradise. Actually, Bejeweled Paradise had a lot of the mechanics that are now seen in a lot of those merge games. Uh, there's a lot of these merge dragons and a whole bunch of other mm. games like Triple Town, where you're essentially merging uh, merging things into uh, different tiers of objects, which uh, I thought was pretty neat, but never quite. Uh, it, was, it was a bit too different than base Bejeweled, and so it, it kind of got canceled because it was, uh, as we discovered with Bejeweled Twist, it was kind of once you got a little too far from the core bejeweled mechanics, it kind of turned off the core bejeweled audience. And so, yeah, it seemed like it was best to, if it's going to be a bejeweled game, you have to do the match three stuff and you couldn't get too far away from jewels and all that stuff. If you are sick of snark, clickbait, and an avalanche of movie news, you can help support independent games media by subscribing to MinMax's YouTube channel here or checking out the benefits over on Patreon. It's a nice, clean handshake. You support us, and we won't make dumb, condescending stuff for you. Your support helps us continue our mission of focusing on games, friends, and getting better. Patreon.com slash MinMax with two N's. We'd appreciate it.